Okay, this is Marty Wilson. It's uh, May 23rd, 2023. I'm sitting at the Grace Park with Jack Burbaum, uh, and Amy and Tanya are here with me. And we're going to talk about Jack's life here in the Poconos. So, Jack, you're a lifelong resident of the Poconos. Can you let's start was, with where and when I, you were born? I was born in actually in the Easton Hospital. But we lived in Stroudsburg because my grandmother lived in Easton, and my mother wanted to go to Easton to have me. But actually, I only lived in Easton for a month and a half. So, other than that, I lived in East Stroudsburg and Stroudsburg all my life. Never left, except. And to go to Penn State and then join the Army and then come back and go in business. And I never left the Poconos. How about that? So who were, who were your parents? My parents were Dave and Reed Birnbaum from East Stroudsburg. My father owned Star Farm. My mother was very active in everything, Grey Leagues, Girl Scouts, you name it. She raised four kids, three meals a day, seven days a week. And um, she was wonderful. You, did, yeah. you didn't say how, when you, when you were born? Oh, I'm sorry, 1932. Yeah. <clears throat> so what are, what are some of your first memories? Uh, going to school? Well, I remember going downtown to East Stroudsburg, which has really changed a lot. I, I hung out, I was a pool room bum, and I was uh, there all the time. And then I, I, high school, I played in the band, and I played football. I was in the Boy Scouts. The Lion, I was president of the Lions Club. I was president of Temple Israel twice over the last 60 years and uh, very active in Temple. Did, did you go to college? You said you went to Yes, college. I went to Penn State. Penn State which, I, which I graduated in, in marketing in 1954, the year before Joe Paterno got there. Okay. <laughs> So I got there and then I came home and uh, worked for a while building our store, which was a highway furniture store. But I said, you know, I'm not cut out to be a mason I had a carpenter. So I joined the army for a couple of years. Then I came back to Strasburg and went in business with my dad. Got married to a girl from Queens, New York, who was on vacation in the Poconos. At Tamamet. Of course, when I told her I was a local, she looked at me. I didn't have hay seat coming out of my ears, and uh, that was good. We were married for 35 years, 40 years. I have a son, and I have a daughter who works at the college. My son is a traveler and lives here, too. So, this was your dad's business? Yes. He came here in 1905 to be, he was an orphan. He came here to be with the Abeloff family. The old man Abeloff was in the, in the furniture business and he came here to be his bookkeeper. And then he took over since, well, 19, I can't remember. I think was, I'm gonna say 1920 something. He started by himself. So when you were in high school and even going into college, was it sort of preordained that you go into the family business? Yes. Yeah. Yes. In fact, when I was in the Army, I used to hitchhike home from um, Indian Town Gap. I'm sorry, from um, Fort Dix on a Friday night in my uniform, went right to the store and worked there for the weekend and went back. But I hear I love, I like people, and that was the name of the game. Also on a little miniature golf course next door to the course, which I helped build myself. This was on Lower Main Street? No, I'm on West Main Street. Um, Eagle Valley Corners, out of Eagle Valley Corners, past uh, where Vinny D's was on the right, we were on the left was a highway furniture store that my dad built and I helped have Mr. Eschenbach, the builder. I think we moved out there. And I think right before I went to college, or when I came home from college, 
1954 is when my dad built that store. And he really built it. He was seven, 68, he didn't need that. But he built it for his children. Because that's the way we were brought up. You know, you have to work twice as hard to get half as far. Hmm. That was the Jewish way of doing things. Mm -hmm. That was ingrained in me. Were your siblings involved? How, who, how I have, many siblings did you have? I have oh yeah, I have two brothers and one sister. Neither one of them live around here. They didn't? My, my, uh, Elaine was my sister. She lives in Florida. And then I have another brother who just passed away. And I have a third brother who is the talk of the world. He's never, he was in the Marine Corps for, for two years, hasn't done a thing except bum around the world. And he just, he just left for Florida driving his van. He's 87 with a pack, air pack on his back. 87? Yep. Everybody thinks he was in the FBI or CIA, but he oh. wasn't. Traveled all over the world. Oh. You name it. But they, were they involved in the business no. too? No. 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 I was the only one. They went off on their own. I not all they left town, left Strasburg. But I like it here, you know. And uh, I'm still going. So uh, tell us about the business. How big was it? What uh, did were there times when it really grew quickly? Well, we had sixteen thousand square feet, and we went out of business because, fortunately, I got a proposal from a, a drugstore to buy the store, and I was seventy. It was time for me to retire, so I sold them the store and uh, retired. I've been retired for 23 years. Mm -hmm. But it was a good business. We had a, a going out of business sale. I keep saying it was a wonderful, but how many people would buy furniture from somebody going out of business? I wouldn't, I, would, I want to know who's gonna service it. But so I had a couple of people that said, I'm really reluctant. I said, look, my name is in the phone book. This is my phone number. I'll be here till the day I die. Call me up if something goes wrong. No kidding. And that was it. Anybody ever take you up on it? No. <laughs> no. No. But I never, never had any bad publicity, really. Mm -hmm. It was a good family business. And the only reason we survived, is we went out of business, because I got a deal I couldn't refuse. And uh, that's it. So now I'm here in Grace Park, uh -oh. which is a nice you place. Nice place. But I do, there are things that you miss. But my kids have a future of their own. My wife passed away. So I have this. What are some of the biggest changes you've seen in Monroe County? Well, you know, Monroe County years ago, when we first started in business, was small family resorts, mom and pop operations. And then it went to honeymoon with the with the heart shaped beds, which by the way I sold. The you Stric sold those tubs? Stricklands and Florida's. I don't know if you knew Ed Strickland or not. Yeah. But I used to sell Ed Strickland pillows by the gross. And the salesman used to say, Where do you sell all these pillows? I said, well, Mr. Strickland, it's all honeymoons. He says, he knows the honeymooners want a souvenir. They're gonna steal something. I want them to steal the pellets that they used on their honeymoon. And then it went from that to the honeymoon resorts, and now it's water parks, which I worked, by the way, after I died, after I died, after I retired, I worked at Camelback for 12 years. Doing what? I was a greeter. This way to the ladies' room, this way to the men's room. 
I loved it there. Oh, yeah, no I had a good time. Yeah. yeah. So you've seen the Poconos grow a lot. Oh yes. Population. Yes. And I and I love to ride. I love to ride around. That's my, of course I love my car with, with the top down. Yeah. And the girls going like that to me. But uh, <laughs> that, so I miss that too. But I've seen, it's a big big change. Uh, I caddied at Shawnee uh, in the 40s and 50s, not knowing that the owner of Shawnee now, um, Charlie Kirkwood, caddied there at the same time. I didn't know him. Oh, yeah. Of course, now I know him. Yeah. He's, a good He's a good friend of a friend of mine. Yeah. yeah. So I, I'm trying to think about what it was like here before Route 80 opened. Would you say that when Route 80 opened? Uh... It was a mess in town. It was terrible, the traffic. In fact, that's one of my summer jobs. I worked for the State Department as a traffic toll. Worked two out, four hours on and four hours off, 24 hours a day. That was my, one of my jobs while I was in college. So it got better after Route 80. Oh, yeah. Now, I was yeah. thinking Route 80 brought an influx of people into no, it. No, well, it was, the cars had to go someplace. So instead of going in town, they ran around 80. Uh, so now the traffic is bad probably both places. Yeah. Now we'll, we'll see what happens. Yeah. I also worked for Fred Wern at the Castle Inn for a while. What'd you do for Fred Wern? Well, the, the Castle Inn had a bowling alley there. I helped rip it, the interior down until they, they made the interior, uh, remodeled the interior. I worked for the contractor. But what I did do, they had a bowling alley there, and we ripped out the bowling alley. So do you, do you ever see a guy that took 25 or 30 bowling balls in his car, and I took them out to State College and sold the guy the bowling balls? No kidding. Yeah. So how old were you when you did that? 19, 17 between you know, years of college. Did you know Fred Waring well, did you? Not well, but I knew him. Yeah. 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 What kind of a guy was he? He was a nice man. You know, I never did any business with him. But, uh, well, I know the resorts. I, I worked for, during the Second World War, I worked for Harry Heller Grosch. He couldn't find a, a man because they were all in the army. So he hired a woman to drive the truck. And I used to haul the meat into every resort in the Poconos. Hmm. And there's lots of stories. Mrs. Eschenbach, or Steve Earl's grandmother. Mm -hmm. I always remember I told Steve, she would not let me leave unless she gave me a dime and a piece of pie. <laughs> so I, she always got service quick. I was a lifeguard at Oak Grove. I was all over when I was 17, 18. Where were you lifeguard? Oak Grove House. Palm? Oak Grove House. Oak Grove. Oak Grove. I took care of the greens at Tamamet. I was a waiter. A couple of resorts. And that's, you know, four or five summers. But the Poconos have really changed. What's the biggest change? And clientele. You know, it's the second home people. Uh, in fact, today, that morning's record, what, Pine Ridge has 2,300 homes. And uh, the one that Charlie Palillo built uh, up in Shawnee, or up in near where Frank Rivera used to live. I can't say good name. Yeah, I don't and know. Old. Yeah, well, it's amazing. We're, these housing developments all over the Poconos. I remember as a kid, you would there were none of these things. No. Now you drive around, it's it's crazy. It's nuts. And the biggest resorts are are have burned down. Like an Anaheim, Penn Hills, it's all to the ground. But it's still a lot of people moving. When, when the population of the Poconos grew, 
did your the business of the store? Oh, oh yeah. yeah, yeah. So it was a good thing for you. It was good, yeah, yeah. We had a good local business, second and third generations, and then people that uh, bought from us. And what I love now is I go out to the movies or the or someplace, and they say, "Oh, you used to own Star Furniture. We bought a sofa there." And they, I said, "Do you still have it?" Say the right thing. See, you said, you said, I said, yes. I said, you said the right thing. That's why we went out of business. Nothing ever fell, fell apart. Uh, yeah. Sell quality merchandise and it yeah. lasts. Yeah. 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 Well, what other big changes do you have you experienced in the Poconos? Population went up and... Well, the railroad station, I used to get down to railroad station a lot. You know, during the Second World War, I don't know if you remember, the VFW women and the American Legion women always used to go down to the DL station and have sandwiches. When the troop came, troop trains came through, they always knew Shalesburg had something to eat. And there were hundreds of soldiers that got off those trains. I love that about East, East Shalesburg. Yeah. That's where the old, the old depot was. Mm -hmm. and then they moved the depot. Right. But now, I mean, Crystal Street, I mean, is loaded with people, you can get, find a parking place there. Yeah, different place. Yeah. Yeah. Did you take the train often? Did you ride it? We took it, I took it to New York, uh, to the furniture show. You should take it from DMW station into Hoboken, and then take the uh, ferry across. That was a nice trip. Would you go in and out in one day, or would you spend the night? We usually spend the night. Yeah. I went with my dad, and we stayed over. Never used to go to uh, Chicago. Went down south a couple times to High Point, but mo most of the places are, are closed. Yeah. yeah. So the train, the population went up. Congestion on the so roads. It's, it's supposed to go up. You know, the train is coming. That's what they say. There's three things you don't need. Really, you shouldn't hear me talk. You don't need gutters in the Poconos. There's no bear. And uh, there's something else they say. But they're full of baloney. Oh, uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. But that's marketing. Yeah, yeah. So what are some of the other things you're proud of doing in your life? Well, Political-wise, I am a ardent Zionist on the state of Israel. I, if I were, I was in Israel three times, and I just marvel how they, in 75 years, these people have progressed so much as thinks any other country in the world. They have the world's second best air force. A pilot in Israel is like God. And these people, you can say, they say they're stiff-necked, but they have a reason to be stiff-necked. For 3,000 years, I say we, Jews have not had a country, and if they weren't stiff-necked, they'd all be in the Mediterranean. They'd be wiped out by the millions against them. And I listen to everything I can. I read everything. That's what I do a lot. Did you did you get involved in local politics? No. No, no just in uh, the temple and the Lions Club, things like that, but nothing political. Mm -hmm. So, uh, other important memories from your past? Where did things? you go, where did you go to elementary school? East Strasburg. Um, Which school was it? The John T. Lambert School in East Stroudsburg. Mm -hmm. The old and John T. Lambert and I were good friends. We both graduated in '50, but he passed away. Um, in fact, it's funny. They just had a class reunion, 50-year reunion at Stroudsmore. It's the first one I missed. You know why? Because I didn't know anybody there from the class. There's hardly anybody left. 
So I ended up. Yeah. But uh, had a good education at East Stroudsburg. Went to, to college my first year because they didn't take Penn State freshmen in those years. Everybody was getting out, out of the Army. So I had my first year at ESU, and the next three at uh, State College, mm -hmm. which was fun. What, what, what street did you live on in East Stroudsburg growing up? <laughs> I showed my kids where we lived, and I showed them six houses. And I said, the sheriff was always behind us. But anyway, to, to, uh, first, there's a big house opposite Stroudsburg High School. They told me I lived there. Then we lived on Sulphur Street in East Stroudsburg, Ransbury Avenue, um, five different locations. It ended up on, um, you know, South Green Street. Jack, when you were a kid, did you stick in a, into your neighborhood pretty much? Yes. So Always to go across town was almost like going to... You're right. I never went across town. The only time I went to YMCA was to shoot pool and play basketball. They had dances there every Saturday night. I never went because that was hobo. And then I got friendly with a lot of people from Stroudsburg. But there was a clash. It was a different time, right? I mean, it was, people stayed in their own neighborhood. And yeah, they, yeah. Well, I spent a lot of time in your childhood, right? I remember playing, playing mumbling pig, shooting on marbles. You know what mumbling pig is? You take a, pen, a knife and you go like, hey, you try to stick it in the ground. And it says, I think they called it stick the belt. If you lost, you got to take off your belt. And, I shattered it for you. Town chase with the bikes all over town. Uh, things they never heard of today. It's yes, yet, yet last night I went to a restaurant in town with my son and I walked in. There were eight people in a row. They must have thought I was crazy. I said, eight of you, when you're all looking at your phone, not one person was talking. So I took out my cell phone, what you say. I said, this is what I have, and I still have it. It works. Flip phone. It works. Yeah. yeah. My kids say I shouldn't have it. I should get a new one, blah, 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 blah. I said, no, this is it. Somebody wants me, I know how to call out or in. Yeah. Did you play any sports in school? Yeah, I played football for the undefeated. We never won a game in the years I was there at East Stroudsburg. But I played football and I played JV basketball. And I was in the band. We had a good band. And the movie theaters were still active back then? Yeah, we had the uh, Grand Theater, which is, I go to it with Camilla. And, there aren't too many people. There was the Sherman, and then the Plaza, which you needed to, uh, was the cowboy movies all the time. The Plaza Theater was the, where the ESS Bank is in East Stroudsburg. Mm -hmm. And of course, then the Sherman and, and Stroudsburg. Sherman, Grand, and Plaza, that's great. And of course, that has changed tremendously. The Sherman Theater today just brings in a lot of people. I mean, I stand out there from the address, oh, you have to like up some, see it three and four deep. But, Do you remember the 55 flood? I remember, but I was in Fort Bliss, Texas at the time. Uh, I was in the army. So how did you hear about it? Well, my parents called me and my brother, helped evacuate bodies on the trucks. And then he came and looked me up in Fort Bliss. 20,000 people, and he walks in the door. This is the kind of guy he is. 
He walks in the door, right, he was what, 16 years old, and he looked me up, he slept in the barracks with me, he ate in the mess hall with me, and he said, I'll see you. I said, where are you going? He said, I'm going to California. This was at six, and he's 16 years old, and now he's 70 so. Hmm. Were you a skier, Jack? No. No? Didn't do the winter sports? No, but they wanted me at Camelback. I worked in the summer. I mean, I'm, I worked at Camel Beach, oh. not at Camelback. Mm -hmm. I says, no, after I retired, I went to Florida for four months, and then I came back and worked at Camelback, Camel Beach, which I loved. I was a good time. What'd you do there? Just walk around and greet people. Oh, yeah. yeah. Or put on their, your wristband. They used to wear a wristband before you walked in. And it's, you ever try to put on a wristband by yourself? It's tough. Yeah, it is. So I used to take and put it, and I used to say, I'm not gonna teach you how to do this. This is work security. <laughs> <laughs> or they have these gold bracelets, and I'd say, if you wear this long enough, it's gonna turn gold. <laughs> and that was a good time. You've done a lot of different things. Yeah, I guess I did. Yeah. Let me ask you a question I just asked a minute ago. What, what, are you, what are you most proud about? That I had a job all the time. Yeah. I always worked. I, I, I used to set up pins. I used to, and I used to double lane. If you remember the, the pins, bowling alleys, mm -hmm. mow lawns, shovel snow. I love that. I like to earn money. Yeah. Have you been in the Castle Inn lately? Have you been down there since they redid it? Yes, I was in the Castle Inn. They did a nice job. Where was the bowling alley? The bowling alley, it was across the street where the ice cream parlor is, in that building, on that side. In other words, the Castle Inn is around the corner. Well, you know. You, okay. Uh, but the Castle Inn was a, a, a good place. A lot of dances, because I was too young. But the bowling alley, they had the and then Fred were in put his workshop in there. That was 1950, 50 or 51. Mm -hmm. yeah. Of course, the deer had it across the street. Were you a jazz fan? I, well, not, I, I frequented it a lot. Yeah. yeah. But I was fine with, it, with Dave Liebman who was a customer of mine. Dave Lehman was a, was a leading uh, trombonist. Yeah, he played with Miles Davis. Yeah. 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 One of my best friends from Penn State is the guy by the White Washington, uh, oh God, football player. I'm trying to think of Lincoln. It was Lincoln. Anyway, my my brain is gone. Yeah, uh, well. It happens. Well, you said you don't feel like you're in your 90s. I don't. <laughs> no, I don't. I'm chomping in the bed when I see my car, but uh, I don't drive anymore. You don't drive anymore at all? Yeah. About a what was he up in here a year? And I just said, that's it, I don't want to do it. I had an accident, not a big accident, but I says, I'm not driving anymore. And it was for somebody, I mean, I used to drive, my secretary used to say, Jack, you got a smile on your face. You're probably going for a, a ride. I said, yes, so I just took off. I wind up in Scranton, Wilkesburg, Allentown. Yeah. I just, Love to drive. Yeah, I can relate. Yeah. Well, what about the other accomplishments of yours? Well, I don't know if I accomplished that much. I just let a, I've never been in jail. <laughs> I was arrested once. I was, in fact, coming back down from uh, Water Gap, the intersection there. I went through a stop sign. I was up at the uh, 
resort. I think that's the only time I ever got to take a, take the guy's name was Davis, if I'm not mistaken. Davis? Yeah, the chief of police. Could be. How long ago was that? 1950 something. Oh yeah, before my time. Yeah. Casey Drake I knew very well. Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah. Did you see, um, no, I guess you wouldn't have seen the Kittatinny, but no. uh, what, there were some resorts still working in, in the water gap. Well, down, but down below where the train station was, Yeah, it, Kitty's was a, was that a tavern, Kitty's tavern, down there. Uh-huh. I used to go down there a lot, not a lot, you know. The Blue Note all the time. Mm -hmm. Danny Pace, remember him? No. No? No. Well, the blue note was right on the left. It's now a, a real estate, uh, or tax, or an accountant. Yeah, I know where. The, yeah, I know the building. Yeah. Did you go down to Shawnee much? Did you have any? Not as much as I do now, because uh, a friend of mine is a good friend of the Kirkwoods, and we go there every Tuesday night. They have a concert starting mm -hmm. now, mm -hmm. outdoors. And I was there the other day for a show at uh, the Playhouse. But uh, I have somebody nice looking who picks me up. Yeah. <laughs> if she sees this, I don't want to embarrass her. <laughs> well, you've done a lot of different things. Well, I've been around a couple of places, yeah. yeah. Went on some nice uh, tours. I've been in Alaska, I've been in Hawaii, I've been all over Europe three times. I went back after I got discharged and then started a reunion with the guys I was in, in the service with. We had probably about 18 guys for 18, 20 years, but now nobody's around. So, gotta be happy. One thing. Is there anything you would have done differently if you could do it over again? No. No. Because I, uh, I did what I wanted. I had a father who was very good. He let me do what I wanted to do because he knew I wouldn't screw up anything. So he had all the faith in me. And that was important. Was your dad still alive when no. you took over the business, or yes? So he retired, and you inherited it. Well, I more or less. Yeah, it was a family deal there. But my dad was in business with me, or I was with him for about ten years. Then he got Parkinson's, which uh, I was always felt I was on the way. You have to have it. So far, after 91, they say, you lose more than your brains. Huh. Yeah. Well, well, can you think of any other questions you'd like to ask, Jack? Fascinating stuff, Jack. Interesting okay, life you've had. Did your, did your wife help with the furniture business? No, she, she worked up at the mall, yeah. Let me ask this question. Is, what, what was the furniture business? Was there a lot of competition between the furniture stores? There was here, of course now it's different, but we had the 800 number. There were four, at least six furniture stores in Stroudsburg. And East Stroudsburg, there was one on every corner. And uh, in Stroudsburg, there was Sears and A.C. Miller's. And in East Stroudsburg, there was Myers. Strasburg, Benning, I forgot the other names. But there were a lot of stores that started. I think there were 30 or 40 furniture stores that started and, and went out of business in the Strasburg area while we were we were there for 60 years. So that's saying something yeah. in a small town. Don't forget, in a small town, you fouled up, everybody knew it, right? Yeah. So, Today there aren't as many, right? I mean, there's Raymore and Flanagan. There's Raymore and Flanagan. Another one just opened up, uh, in the mall 
but a lot of people go to Easton, they go to Hess's in Allentown. Hess's was the king, but they moved here. I used to say, well, the king's here. What do you, it's still, you know, but Allentown, Bethlehem, you know, we're only 50, 60 miles from five or six towns. But if you kept your nose clean and did what you're supposed to do, we, uh, can I ask you, switching gears, about the history of Temple Israel and the building? Was that that building is a hundred? Is uh, the Temple Israel was in East Stroud in, in the Pocono for a hundred years, but there was the old one was in East Stroudsburg, mm -hmm. where the um, what is it? Not the, it's a hamburger joint. The Burger King. Burger King. And I would keep saying the joke that I got apartments ready. Right where they're frying hamburgers. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so you were there when it was built, when the newer building the new, was built? The, new, the newer one was built in 1960, okay. the one that's there now. Mm -hmm. And we had, unfortunately, we lost a lot of members, a lot of people moved out of town. And, uh, but we're, so, there's, I, I'm, I, I'm not as active as I used to be, unfortunately. Especially that I don't drive. But I get to go out three, at least three times a week from here. I just opened up a Jewish Resource Center. I go there every Thursday. Today, I didn't go, but we have seven or eight guys who go out to lunch every week. Unfortunately, a lot of them passed away. Sam Newman, mm -hmm. Les Abeloff, Herb Rosen, Irv F. Ross, the last four one year. So that's the way it goes. And the, and the Jewish cemetery is in Middle Smithfield. Jewish right? cemetery is in Middle Fifth. And yes. that's, that's been there for God knows how many years. Yeah. Are there still spots available in that or is that closed? No, there's, actually there are two, two I keep say we're the smallest congregation in the world that has two cemeteries. We have the one in where there's a tombstone there with not my name, but a black. I, I see it all the time. And Laura Ward has a tomb section with the Les Sable of that. J.L. Cohn dedicated. And that's really, if you want to say, the newer one. But I like the old one. A lot of people don't like it. They said there's too many cars going by. The old man Abel, if you knew him, he said, I want to be buried there so I can see all the traffic go by. Did you ever experience anti-Semitism here in the Poconos? A little, but not a lot. Not, I can remember two or, two or three. And I have a good story to tell you if you have time to listen. Go ahead. When I was in high school, there were two guys I was very friendly with. We all, we, they wanted us to, they would join the Marines. They got, they got, um, wounded in Korea and blah, blah, blah. And the story is that the Jews don't fight. The Jewish quartermaster corps, the Jewish infantry is the quartermaster corps. The Jewish rifle is a typewriter. And no one's, but here's the, the facts. And I never knew this. When I went to Florida, I met a guy who was in the Marines who wrote this book. There were 550,000 Jews that were under arms in the Second World War. And of that 550,000, 50,000 were either killed or wounded. That's 10%. That's a heck of a big percentage. So anyway, I called these guys and I, they, we got through the phillies. Jack, stop gurging about it. She said, we got thrown out of Kathy's school. We got this and that. I said, it's, it still bothers me. So anyway, about 20 years later, I love to ride around. And I was one guy, when he's not in jail, he's teaching school. Well, I caught him at his house and I said, who is it? He says, who is this? I said, take a guess. And he says, so I told him. He says, Jack. He says, I, mean, he, I said, he says, who is this? I said, this is Ariel Sharon. And I got two tanks around your house and I'm gonna blow it up. He says, Jack. Where the hell are you? He said, the Kaya Michelin Hotel. He came down in five minutes on two wheels 
jumps out of his car, gives me a big hug, and he says, he said, anyway, in Jewish, because he worked at the Catskills, um, be, Zygazun, be healthy. And I, I tear when I say this. Here's two guys that I thought were the worst anti-Semites. And yes, there is anti-Semitism, and a lot, but some people like us. And I really never, I, I've never felt in the business, I think twice in all those years. Twice. Other than that, no. Business whites, I, I never felt it. Now it's prevalent, but I have never, I haven't felt it. Some people say they have, and maybe they have, but sometimes they're pulling the race card. You know, they say, well, they don't like me because I'm a Jew. Yeah. And I, I got another, you remember Joan Summers? It suffers his wife. Yeah, I remember her. Okay. <clears throat> Joan and I were runners up for the best look best looking baby contest the Pocono Record used to run. This was what, 1934. Joan won. I lost. My mother says I lost. Why? Because I'm Jewish. I said, no, that's not the reason. She just got war votes. That's the only time I ever I was just kid her about that. We were very friendly. Well, the Jewish community was pretty savvy business-wise around the Poconos, right? It, you know, living in Stroudsburg, I never knew there was a Jewish cop or a Jewish fireman or a Jew. When I went to Florida, and I met a lot of people, because here in a small town were junk dealers, or clothing store owners, or lawyers, or doctors. And why is that? Because Jews have it, we're such, shut out of going to better schools. I know three people in East Stroudsburg that were very successful. They went into their father's business because they weren't allowed to go to a lawyer, a law school, or they, they weren't accepted. Mm. Yeah. But all in all, your life here in the Poconos has been pleasant. Oh, I think so. Yeah. 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 Okay. Very much so. Very much so. There is just uh, aren't many left. A lot of people, they say they're Jewish, and but they don't practice it, which is a lot of people. The same thing with churches. Sure. Like I said, the Grace Lutheran Church in East Stroudsburg was one of the biggest churches. I lived right around the corner, the Grace Lutheran. Now it's, there's a big sign there that they're joined with another denomination on Lackawanna Abbey. Mm -hmm. So, is that saying a lot for the, for the United States? I don't know. Somebody's here. Personally, I don't think it looks that good, but we'll survive. Yeah. Well, are there any questions we should have asked you? Any, anything you wanted to talk about that we haven't gotten to? Hmm. I don't think so. I'll try to answer anything well, you ask me. You, you lived a pretty fascinating life, an interesting life, did a lot of different things. Yes, I got to travel the world. Got to meet you. Yeah, got to, yeah. How about that? In fact, I the first time I was in the historical society had it been when I was in high school. I had been since. So why was I there? I was playing on a brass quartet in the women's club. The second floor. My mother was playing the piano. Stores open. Stores close. How are you? Sorry. She's funny. Yep. The women's club had the second floor. Yes. Yeah. That's where I, my mother played the piano, singing a song, and I got embarrassed. You know, your son is there, but I played the trumpet. That's where I was. 
Well, maybe on that note, we should end the uh, interview. <laughs> yes, and I'll be back. Okay. Well, <laughs> thanks very much, Jack. I enjoyed listening to your talk.